Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May God's grace and peace be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. We celebrate today the feast day of Martin of Tours. He's the first person in the Western Church to have an a annual feast day given to him who was not a martyr. So this uh, respect for Martin of Tours goes back a long ways, and rightly so. Also, uh, we're here to give thanks to God for the witness of Father John Dunn, too. Hello. Come in if you're good looking. Hi, Father. Welcome. I haven't been here. It's been about a few years, I think. Look behind you. Yeah, there's a camera there. So oh. <laughs> Stand out of the view. Over here is fan or what is that? I'm going to get back over there. Okay. So we take a further moment to dispose ourselves, open our hearts that the Lord's Word might abide there and guide us, and uh, that the gift of the Eucharist might nourish us in our journey together. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive our sin and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. O God, who are glorified in the Bishop St. Martin, both by his life and death, make new, we pray, the wonders of your grace in our hearts, that neither death nor life may separate us from your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the second letter of St. John. Chosen Lady, I rejoiced greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth just as we were commanded by the Father. But now, Lady, I ask you, not as though I were writing a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, let us love one another. For this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, as you heard from the beginning, in which you should walk. Many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. Such is the deceitful one and the Antichrist. Look to yourselves that you do not lose what we work for, but may receive a full recompense. Anyone who is so progressive as not to remain in the teaching of the Christ does not have God. Whoever remains in the teaching has the Father and the Son. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response, blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are, are they, they who follow, who follow the, law the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose ways blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are, are they, they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed, Blessed are, are they who follow the law of the Lord. 
with all my heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commands. Blessed are they who follow the Lord, the Lord. Within my heart I treasure your promise that I may not sin against you. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Be good to your servant, that I may live and keep your words. Blessed, Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Open my eyes, that I may consider the wonders of your law. Blessed, Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. your heads because your redemption is at hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, it was in the days of Lot. They were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building on the day when Lot left Sodom. Fire and brimstone rained from the sky and destroyed them all. So it will be on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, someone who is on the housetop and whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get them. And likewise, one in the field must not return to what was left behind. Remember the wife of Lot. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses it will save it. I tell you, on that night there will be two people in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. And there will be two women grinding meal together. One will be taken, the other left. They said to him in reply, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. You may have heard in the news last spring there was a Holy Cross sister, actually a Marianite sister, uh, as part of the Holy Cross family. The Holy Cross sisters were originally Marianites and, uh, in France, and then the Sisters of the Holy Cross is the group that set up here in this country, and the Holy Cross sisters set up in Canada, but basically they're all from Saint Croix and follow more rows pups, but uh, a Marianite sister in that group of sisters is down to about 20 worldwide and their headquarters has moved from Paris, from uh, Le Mans rather to New Orleans where most of the current vocations came from and their average age is over 75. Uh, in May, uh, a gal named Lou Ellen Tennyson, a Marianite sister, was uh, abducted by some marauders who broke into uh, their convent in uh, a West African country uh, and there were three nuns living there and they, these people and a few uh, native Africans were living there because the reason for them being in the area in a real remote part of the jungle was they had a clinic there to serve the health needs of folks. 
Anyway, at 2 o'clock in the morning, their convent's broken into. There are three nuns and maybe four lay people living there. And they take away this oldest of the nuns, 83, on a motorcycle. And they ride until mid-morning and stop in a clearing. And uh, they're, these are uh, Muslim Africans who are abducted her. And uh, of course, she's exhausted and doesn't know what's about to happen, but she's been praying intensely on this six-hour, eight-hour motorcycle ride. And they stop in this clearing. There are six or eight other people there, and uh, all men. And they say, don't you try to run away. And she said, I'm 83, I can't run, and I don't know where I am. Don't worry, I'm not leaving. <laughs> And uh, in the transit, she had somehow cut her big toe. Uh, and she was sitting there in need of attention. And one of the men in the group came over and washed her feet and put a bandage on her toe. And she, in telling this story, uh, I'll go on. Uh, she was passed from that group of Muslims to another fundamentalist group and uh, she doesn't know why or who they were or where she was. And she was with them for three months, maybe four. And uh, all she had that whole time to eat was black coffee, rice, and bananas. And uh, the second group, uh, one of its people, one day said, get on this motorcycle. So they went for a long ride, this time maybe eight hours. And she was just completely exhausted, holding on and about to ask, couldn't we please stop when they cross a second river and there sits a, a SUV and there's a African man in his native dress and there are two white men in uh, clothes like we're wearing and uh, she didn't know what to make of that either, but the motorcyclist takes her up to them and she gets off and that guy leaves. And this is all in a <clears throat> interview she gave when she got back to New Orleans. But she said uh, that they went in this vehicle, they went, uh, a ways into a small village and told her that they had some food that she could eat. They told her she was safe. Uh, the two uh, white men identified themselves as FBI people and I didn't know the FBI was operating in uh, places like this, but uh, they said before you eat you might want to take a shower. And there was a lady in the house who helped with the shower and this uh, Sue Ellen, Sister Sue Ellen, said she thought she was in heaven. That was her first shower in four months. Wow. And uh, then she had something to eat. And she, she finally gets back to New Orleans, to her mother house. And they're not, uh, she doesn't want, she doesn't know how she got found or what was done to get her home. But she's glad to be home and she's very grateful. She said her, in this interview that uh, what she was going to say in the interview was all she knows and she doesn't care to do another interview and answer questions because she doesn't know any more than what she's about to say. And she says all this. And then she says, <clears throat> uh, I don't know how I got freed, but somehow uh, so my overwhelming emotion, she said, is gratitude because I've been spared. And I thank God for being spared and for all the people who worked to get me home, find me and get me home, and for all the people who prayed for me. So right now, there's no anger or anything. I feel uh, my overriding feeling is one of gratitude. And uh, she's... At the time of this interview, she had been home a few weeks and she was still using a walker trying to get back her strength. But she was a 
pretty vigorous 83 year old before all this started. Anyway, she says, from the time they took her out of her convent at two in the morning, she said, Jesus, please stay with me. Jesus, please stay with me. That was her prayer as she went on this motorcycle ride. And then this man, as soon as they get to the clearing and a man sees that her toe is bleeding and comes over and washes her feet and bandages her toe, she said, I'll be okay. Uh, that's Jesus right there washing my feet. And uh, she read that as an answer to her prayers that uh, Jesus, please stay with me. Jesus, please stay with me. And no sooner does she get in the middle of this group and one of them is washing her feet. And John talks about uh, love being the overriding virtue there in that first reading. And uh, this woman, her, the depth of her spirituality, the love in her heart, uh, she was superior general of the Marianites, and she she's the one that opened this uh, clinic in rural Faso is the second. It's a double name country. So Burkina Faso. What is it? Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. Yeah, that's I where think she it used to be. A, oh, it will come to me. But that's the they changed the name maybe twenty years ago. That's where she was, and and while she was. Upper Volta or something, that was a long time ago. Uh -huh. Thank you. I keep thinking of Boca Raton, but I know it's, it's not. It's a funny shape. It kind of goes up, like at an angle. It's uh -huh. skinny and long. It's a weird shape because, like, it doesn't go north south because it's mostly desert there, though, I think, or Sahara dry. Well, anyway. Jungles, too. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know any of that. But anyway, she. Uh, gets home from this ordeal and her overriding emotion is one of gratitude and love for all the people who extended themselves on her behalf including the man who washed her feet and uh, you just uh, the gospel talks about being ready you don't know when the Lord is coming to claim us and uh, there'll be two people on the housetop, two people grinding, two people in the fields, and by surprise, the Lord will. There were three nuns. They came and took one. <laughs> Nobody knows why that one, but uh, so it is. But apparently she was ready because she was able to pray from the start. Jesus stayed with me, and she got evidence of that prayer being heard right away. So, uh, we gather tonight to give thanks to God for his staying with us. And just like the fellow who washed her feet was a manifestation of God staying with uh, Sue Ellen, so John Dunn has been for us uh, a manifestation of God staying with us in so many ways, a real emissary of the Lord in our lives. And we can name others, but we give thanks to God uh, our overwhelming emotion is one of gratitude when we think of people like John Dunn and Sue Ellen. Let's petition our loving God as Jesus has invited us to do. Let's pray for it. Oh, you've got some great. Have at it. Okay. Um, please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Kevin, all priests, that they could all grow together in God's love. Let us pray for all government officials. Oh. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all government officials that they will effectively serve the common good. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for <clears throat> the war-torn parts of our world, especially the Ukraine and Russia, 
and for the troubles in East Africa. No. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick, especially those affected by the Ebola epidemic in Uganda. No. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the members of the John Dunn Fellowship that they are blessed and comforted by their friendship with John Dunn, especially for all those who serve God in their work as theologians. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who have died, especially in this month of November, when we remember whom we remember in prayerful love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us mention our personal needs in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, hear and answer us, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through the mangling of this water and wine, may we come to share in your divinity, Lord. You've humbled yourself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread and this wine to offer. Fruit of the fields, work of human hands. These will become our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sin. Pray that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify these offerings, we pray, Lord God, which we joyfully present in honor of St. Martin, so that through them our life may always be directed whether in tribulation or in prosperity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God through Christ. For as on the festival of St. Martin you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. You teach her by the words of his preaching, and you keep her safe in answer to his prayers. So with all the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, Lord, you are holy, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your, your resurrection until you, you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, and all who serve in your name. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Father John and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on each one of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martin and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles gathered at table with you on a Thursday night long ago, and you say to us gathered at your table tonight, peace, that's my gift. Look not at our sin, look at the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We share Christ's peace now. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace. Peace, 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, his banquet is prepared. Blessed indeed are they invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Dear God, grant to us who have been restored by the sacrament of unity, perfect harmony with your will in all things, that just as St. Martin submitted himself entirely to you, so we too may glory in being truly yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll start uh, just for the, uh, a reflection on John Donne, and then we'll do a final blessing for the people in the stewardship over at Helen's. Uh, I wanted to thank you for coming out here tonight to honor John Donne. Um, and I prepared these remarks in light of the fact that Joe Bajakis could not be here. Um, so, uh, to honor uh, Joe as well, in his efforts with the John Dunn Fellowship, and the other people in the John Dunn Fellowship who wish they could be here, we're remembering them tonight. We remember uh, uh, Paul and Kevin, uh, we remember John, we remember uh, Eileen, we remember Colleen, we remember uh, the two Marys, uh, and we remember all the other people, uh, too numerous to mention, but those are our special friends that were with John Dunn, especially at the end of his life, and uh, we built a kind of a fellowship around that. Um, in Gaudium et Spes, the Vatican II document on the 
church in the modern world, we find this exhortation about wisdom. Humanity's intellectual nature finds at last its perfection as it uh, uh, leads to in wisdom, which gently draws the human mind to look for and to love what is true and good. Endowed with wisdom, women and men are led through visible realities to those which are invisible. Our age, more than any of the past, needs such wisdom if, uh, if the, uh, all of the uh, discoveries uh, are and are to be ennobled. All the human discoveries are to be ennobled, excuse me, through human effort. Indeed, it goes on, and this is a key, key line. Indeed, the future of the world is in danger unless people are forthcoming who are wise. It should also be uh, posited, pointed out, that many nations which are poorer as far as material goods are concerned, they are yet richer in wisdom and they and they can be uh, of the greatest uh, motivations to oneness. When I announced this event on Facebook, uh, Kevin Belton, who's a dear friend of mine and was a dear friend of John Donne's, responded, John was a gentle giant. He spoke softly in conversation and gave me a shoulder and heart when I was suffering. <clears throat> Notice the word gentleness in both the church document about wisdom and the description of John's kindness to his friends and students and co-workers at Notre Dame. The wisdom that the world needs to survive is a wisdom that gently draws the human mind to look for and to love that which is true and good. I give three examples quickly that stand out for me of John's gentle wisdom. First is his willingness to confront the depths of loneliness. One time he was at Martin's supermarket and he encountered Joe Bajakis. Joe proposed a book about John entitled The Gospel According to the Lone Pilgrim. <laughs> John looked at Joe and said, Don't say lone pilgrim, say lonely. And that, uh, that, that was John's willingness to confront his loneliness and gain insight about hope and love. Here's what he said about hope. Hope is setting my heart on someone or something that will take away my loneliness. But hopefulness is opening my heart to mystery. And in the rest of this quote is so worthwhile and I'm turning to it in the book. Be patient with me. Uh, you know, the light in here is uh, <laughs> a challenge. It is. Uh, he says, opening my heart to the mystery of our loneliness, to the love of God, knowing we are in love with God, and only the way of being so uh, is through loneliness uh, uh, and uh, in simple, simply being alone and willing to be unalone and is in it, and so gladness 
in the love of God in being alone with the alone, with a capital A. So there you have his confrontation with loneliness. Then hear his words about faith and the mystery of loneliness. Now this passage I, I wrote out so I can read it more easily, but this was the passage that the day I traveled to Chicago uh, when John Donne made his decision in the hospital to, to be taken back to Notre Dame to Holy Cross House to die. I was there and I took the South Shore in and the, the night before uh, I opened his book, his autobiography here, and it came open to this passage. And so this is like a banner passage, but it goes after this problem of loneliness again. And this is what he says. And so the mystery of our loneliness is the mystery of our love and longing for God. And it is fulfilled in us entering into the relationship of Jesus with the God he calls Abba. Um, like uh, Sister Mary Ellen turned to Jesus. So too John Donne here, right? Um, with the God he calls Abba. My God and your God. My Father and your Father. If the love of God is simply joy at the thought of God, as I have learned from Spinoza, this means an underlying joy. Listen to this. A jo underlying joy in a life. Uh, this is what I have found in spite of the fear and weariness and sadness of a life. An underlying joy. A joy at the thought of God with us on my journey. Jesus being with us, right? On my journey in time. Under all this was a great joy, as Tolkien says, a fountain of mirth enough to set a kingdom laughing were it to gush forth. So John Donne does this remarkable thing of turning his aloneness and his loneliness into the joy of the Lord by the grace of faith. Notice that. Now, after uh, uh, John died, there was a wake service. And you can watch the wake service on YouTube. And Father Paul Coleman does an awesome job of a homily at this wake service. And you can hear that. Uh, this His powerful reminiscence, his personal reminiscence of conversing with John about the vocation of a theologian. This is what John Donne uh, and Paul talked about. Um, he says, this is Father Coleman recounting this, John Donne once became angry with me. Surprising, huh? <laughs> I was questioning him with impertinent questions of a younger, more callow theologian. How can you say this? What's the basis uh, for this assertion? And how does this claim fit with some of your other claims that, are, that I've read about in your other books. All of a sudden, he sort of grimaced, and I was sort of caught off guard by this uh, flash of temper. Uh, he spoke out, looking at me closely, uh, with obvious frustration, John said, Paul, you're trying to understand what I say as an argument. Arguments? Who was ever convinced by an argument? Be led by insight, not arguments. John combined the willingness to be gentle with a bold hope that he could tackle the intellectual challenges of modernity. I posted John Nilsson's article on Facebook in the same post mentioned above. And a friend of mine from St. Bavos, 
uh, uh, looked at that article, read it, and this is what he said. The article had me considering how one incorporates the practical, that is, mundane aspects of our lives, into these deep, rich encounters. We are on the road of love, of our heart's desire, to feel that burning is God's gift. To follow the path lit by insights can be the balance between getting through life with our approaching death. I was really moved by that, to realize that. And I think you can see that John Donne's thinking has a way of reaching out across all kinds of differences in people. And that's the, uh, uh, that's the gift that he continues to give us even nine years after he died. I close with this line. Could you repeat that last beautiful thing you said one more time? That quote about the burning, about the life. Sure, this was, again, this was written by one of my friends from St. Babel's, reflecting on John Nelson's article about John Donne, which is entitled, uh, uh, A Theologian and Author for Our Dark Times. It was in America Magazine. It's right online. You can, you can get it off of the internet. But he was reading that, and he said, the article had me um, seeing how one incorporates the practical, mundane affairs of our lives into these deep, rich encounters. We're on the road of love, of our heart's desires. To feel that burning is God's gift. To follow the path lit by insights can be the balance between getting through life with our approaching death. That's what he said. It's pretty powerful, I, I do admit that. So obviously, I could go on, but the, you got the picture. The picture is that John Donne taught a very clear and universal wisdom that came from his vocation as a systematic theologian, as a member of the Congregation of the Holy Cross, and as just a really down-home good guy. And so I close with the, the poem that he closed the, la the class I went to. And by the way, if you want his last lecture, it's on YouTube. It's under the Notre Dame Alumni Lecture for 2013. It was June of 2013. And he gave uh, a wonderful lecture. Uh, and um, I could have summarized it, but time does not allow. But when he finished the class he taught me, the last time I took his class, he used this prayer. This prayer was spoken by uh, the king to the people of England in the, uh, the dark Christmas of 1939. It's a poem by Haskins. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God that shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to ask uh, I'll, uh, the, uh, the, the members of the uh, Helen Stewardship to come forward, please, Joel and Chris. Father Doyle, almost two years ago, yeah. Father Doyle, almost two years ago, um, here at the Log Chapel, we gathered here for a prayer service where we uh, remembered Father Petit mm -hmm. and uh, his Potawatomi companions and dedicated. Um, I got. I got to get light here. 
Give me a light I'll that I'll get. For you. No, I, you give me a light that I can I can confront the darkness, just like the poem goes. And hold it up for me, right? Okay. There it is. Uh, and dedicated. And and dedicated ourselves and our stewardship to Saint Joseph. During our mutual journey of faith, we have seen how the wisdom of Father John has done and kindles our hearts and enlightens our minds to persevere in charity. Therefore, on this special night when we lovingly remember Father John has done, we ask your blessing as we dedicate ourselves to follow the example and accepting the intercession of Saint Joseph, the protector of the Holy Family and the patron of those who participate in the art of labor for the common good. Saint Joseph of the steadfast heart, Please bless these your servants who seek to imitate you in your mission to protect the church. Give them the grace to persevere in good work guided by your example. Tonight, especially, bless the intentions of Peter ha Helland and his stewardship as he seeks with his brothers to follow Christ in this dedication. Amen. Amen. Okay. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend on you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our prayer together ends for now. We go from here to glorify the Lord with our lives. Thank you, Father. Thanks, Father, very much. I had a song that says we